In this problem, we're told a skier of mass 70 kilograms is pulled up a slope by a motor-driven cable. A, how much work is required to pull him 60 meters up a 30 degree slope, assumed frictionless, at a constant speed of two meters per second? B, what power expressed in horsepower must a motor have to perform this task? Right, so imagine this is the drawing, right? This is what's going on. So we have the slope, 30 degrees. We have this skier, uh, right? And this is the skier, it's just represented by a box. And the skier is gonna travel up, right? Uh, 60 degree, right, or 60 meters, right, up the slope. We know their mass is 70 kilograms, and we know that they're gonna be doing it at a constant of two meters per second, right? So let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, what we're trying to do is solve for the work. And so the formula for work is work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. All right, so if we wanna actually solve for the work that this is done, right, we need the distance they're traveling, which in this case we do know it, where they're traveling 60 meters, right? Uh, cosine of theta, we'll worry about in a second. And so we basically need to uh, find the force, right? So we need to find the forces acting on uh, our person, right? So the way we're gonna do it is to find the force, right? Cause there's this, uh, there's this tension force holding up, pulling them up, right? And that's the force we're gonna be looking for. Right, so the first thing you want to do is just label the forces. So we have the force mg going straight down, right? mg going straight down, which is just the force due to gravity. We have the normal force going up like this, Fn. And then there's no friction force, so there's nothing going this way, but there is a tension force, right, that's pulling it up. So what we want to do is go ahead and solve for this tension force, right? Because if we can plug in the tension force, we have the distance, we have uh, theta, right? We'll be able to solve for uh, work. So the way we're going to solve for tension is by taking the sum of the forces in the x direction. So when you solve these problems, we draw an axis like this, right? So this axis, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. So when I say sum of the forces in the x direction, I'm talking about all the forces in this direction right here, right, along that line. So what are the forces we have? So, well, first off, the sum of the forces in the uh, x direction are going to be equal to zero. And the reason is because force equals ma, but the acceleration is zero because we're moving at a constant speed, right? So zero is equal to, and then you just set all the forces. So we have the force of tension. And right, we're going to say this way is positive, this way is negative. So T is positive. So you just plug in T, right? T. And then what other forces do we have in this x direction? So there's none explicitly, but we have an x component of gravity right here going in this direction, right? So the way you want to look at it is like a triangle. So if you imagine this is straight down, there's going to be something like this. So we're trying to find this x component right here of this angle. So it's kind of drawn over here, which doesn't make it look as good, but I'll explain how we find it. So imagine if I draw this triangle right here. This angle right here is going to be the same as the angle of the incline. That's just what you have to know. So the angle between uh, basically the normal force or perpendicular to the box is the same thing as, uh, right, is 30 degrees from the hypotenuse, right, which is mg. So this right here of our new triangle is 30 degrees. mg is the hypotenuse, right, this long line. And then what we're trying to do is solve for x, right? And notice it's opposite to the angle. So if we label it on our triangle right here, we're solving for x. So we know the co or sorry, we know the sine of an angle, right? In this case, 30 degrees. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is x over mg. So if you multiply both sides by mg now, you'll get x is equal to mg times the sine of theta, right? So the x component, right? One of the forces in the x direction is mg times the sine of uh, 30, right? So what we want to do is minus it because it's going down, right? Because we said this was positive, this is negative. So minus mg times the sine of 30. And then if you add it to the other side, t equals mg times the sine of 30. Right, so now we know the tension force, so we can just go ahead and plug it in, right? Because work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. So work equals the force, which is mg times the sine of 30. So the mass is 70 times g, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared, times the sine of 30, multiply by the, that by the distance it's traveling, 60. And then multiply that by the cosine of theta. But keep in mind, in theta in this case is the angle between the direction it's going and in the force, right? So it's going in the same exact direction as the force. They overlap, right? Meaning the angle between the two are just zero. And so the cosine of zero is just one. So really, you don't need it there. So it's really just 70 times, right? So 70 times 9.8. Here, let me plug it in. 70 times 9.8 times the sine of 30. And then multiply that by 60. And when you go ahead and do this, you'll get the work equals 20580, right? So you can round this however you want. You can just round it to 21,000, right? And keep in mind, this is joules. So just round however you want. And so 21,000 is just 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2.1 times 10 to the 4 joules, right? Because we measure work in joules. So you can choose any of these as your answer. Just make sure you do what your teacher wants you to do. So that's going to be this one. Now let's go ahead and do B. So for B, what we're trying to do is solve for, or it says what power expressed in horsepower must a motor have to perform this task? So what we're trying to do is solve for power. So what you need to know the formula for power. So power is the same thing, or it's equal to work over time, 
or, or the change in time, essentially the time that passes, right? So if we know, we know the work, right? We know the work required to do this, but what is change in time? So we actually don't know the time this is going to take, right? But we do know time, right? Or we know, sorry, we know distance is equal to velocity times time, right? And if we divide by V, T is equal to the distance divided by, or sorry, this is V. V divided by V. So time is equal to the distance divided by the velocity. And we know the distance and we know the velocity, right? You could just say it's going to be 30 seconds, but it's just easier to do it this way. So if that's the case, it's just going to be the work divided by, right? It was the distance divided by the velocity, right? Because we know distance is equal to velocity times time divided by V. Yeah. So if we flip this, right? Because it's really copied out flip, right? So it's the work times the velocity divided by the distance, right? And so all you have to do is just plug in your values. So the work was 2.1 times 10 to the 4. I'm using the more rounded value if you want to use, actually, I'm just going to write 21,000, but uh, I'm using the more rounded. If you want to use the more exact, go ahead and do that. So our answer might be a little bit off. But 21,000, multiply that by the velocity, which is 2 meters per second, divided by the distance it's traveling, which is 60 meters, right? So let's divide by 60. And then when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 21,000, right? So 21,000 times 2, and then divide by 60. So when you do that, you're going to get exactly 700. But keep in mind when we do this, right? When you solve it this way using this, right? Joules divided by the time, it's measured in watts. So this is watts, but we want to convert it into horsepower because it says expressed in horsepower. So in order to solve this, you need to know one horsepower, right? Because we're going to convert it, is equal to 746 watts, right? So if that's the case, it's 700 watts right? And then multiply it, we have to divide by 746 watts, because that's equal to one horsepower, right? So notice the watts will cancel, and you'll just have it in horsepower. So basically, you do 700, and then you're dividing by 746, essentially. And when you do that, you'll get 0.9383, and so on. I'm just going to round to 0.94, and then the units are horsepower. So 0.94 horsepower, that's going to go ahead and be your answer to B. So the power, uh, the motor has to, uh, must the motor have to perform this task. So uh, this is the average power, right? So yeah, this is gonna be your answer for B. And then this was your answer to A. And yeah, hopefully you found this useful.